Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at this custom drawing stuff. Um, so if you have any, uh, well, any node that derives the canvas item. So basically that means any control node or any node 2D, any of these, you'll be able to use custom drawing. And all that basically is, is this function right here, which allows you to send specific uh, drawing commands and then you run update to make it actually process all this stuff. And that's it, I've already set this up. This is the important bit right here. You have update and you have draw. Um, now, quite frankly, the documentation for custom drawing in 2D, there is a dedicated web page for this. Um, and you can see it goes into quite a bit of detail. You just read the whole thing explains everything, every little caveat. So if you want to take a look at this, I can put a link in the video description for you. Um, but really, I am i don't really have to explain that because it's all fairly straightforward. I think the main thing is just being aware of which of these are relevant and which of these are um, useful. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to use, I'm going to demonstrate my five uh, favorite or my five preferred drawing commands. So I'm going to start with a nice simple one, which is draw circle. And you can see from that, uh, I'm for the positions, I'm just going to add this extra node called position 2D. And in fact, in fact, I'm just going to use that. I'm just going to call this one circle. Okay. Just that I know, um, let's do green, okay? So that's a nice circle. And you may also actually be able to notice if you move the parent node, all these positions are relative to the uh, node that they're drawing from. So if I called, um, you know, draw circle in my position 2D node here, so this other thing I added, and I said, draw a circle at zero, zero, it would be at zero, zero it's relative to the parent node, uh, which may not be too surprising, but for some reason, when I was starting out, I thought that it would be relevant to the screen uh, viewport or something, and I have no idea why. I think just because I was always using it in the tree root node, so it never really made a difference, but anyway. So that's my nice circle. What about the line, though? In fact, I'm gonna increase the size of that circle. I want that to be a real, and I'm gonna make it yellow. I'm going to make it yellow. There we go. But what about a line? So that's the next one I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to go for a line and I'm going to call this one line 1 because a line has got to start from somewhere and line 2. That'll do. Uh, so again, very simple. You do draw a line from let's do line 1 dot position 2 line 2 dot position and what color should we have that? Let's go for a nice, what are the options here? Um, man, that's a lot of options. Let's go for um, uh, crimson, why not? And width, let's make that a nice, let's make that a nice one. Okay, so that's a very fine line. I don't know if I like that. I might turn that up to an eight. That's a thick line. That's a thick line. That's doing no, uh, no issues at all. What if I make it point at the circle? Now we have some kind of abstract art thing going on, which is kind of cool. And that's pretty much it for the line. Um, you can see there is some information. You could make it anti-aliased. Do I should I do that? Would it make a difference? Barely. So the next thing I might want to look at is the draw polyline function, which takes in a list of points and it draws a very big jaggedy line. Um, and, you know, when would I want to do that? Well, in my last video, I covered the path 2D, uh, actually. So I'm thinking maybe I want to visibly draw the path of a path 2D. So it'll kind of go across like that, I guess. I don't know. It'll do its own thing, and that should be good enough. Um, now I know that I can get a list of points from that path duty. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna say, draw a polyline. The points I'm going to use are going to be, now it's gonna be this get baked points thing, which should give me a list of points. That's just, I just got that from the documentation. Um, 
let's see, what color should I have it? Let's go for color. You know what? Let's also go for crimson and let's also go for eight so that it looks. Well, that's interesting. Oh, I know why it is. It's because I'm I'm supposed to be getting it from the curve, aren't I? And I'm getting it from the path 2D. So give me a second. And now we have, well, we have a curve. We have the points on the curve. We have a polyline. And we drew this via uh, the, the code. So that's kind of nice. It looks like a strange sort of uh, smile. Almost like a really, like a one-eyed sort of that thing. Anyway, um, a polyline is nice. But what about a polygon? Can that be done? Well, as it turns out, it can. And in fact, I'm going to demonstrate this um, using a trick that I learned at some point, which is uh, the ability to use custom drawing to draw uh, collision polygons uh, when you have physics objects. So if you have, you know, a terrain or something like this, let me draw some. Let me draw some terrain, depending on what it should look like. I did this in one of my live streams as well. Um, so there's my polygon, it's attached to my static body, so this will be collidable by any other physics bodies, you could walk on this. Um, but you know, when I run the thing, it doesn't show up as anything because there's no texture, and maybe I don't want to go open GIMP and, you know, draw that, so what I can do instead is I can say draw polygon, I can get my collision polygon, I can just get that straight away. Now colors, I think, um, I, I'm going to make it a pool color array because I'm scared. Um, and I'm just going to say, I'm pretty sure you only have to put one. So I'm just going to do color. Let's go for aqua. I think if, if you only put one, it defaults to making the whole polygon that color. But in principle, you could do, you could do others. Uh, and there's UVs in case you wanted UVs. But here is my, here is my terrain. You know, it looks a bit, I mean, that's a bright blue. This is not a lesson in color theory, but that's terrain. And you can see this is the exact collision shape of my uh, static body. So that could be quite useful. And in fact, just as a little bonus, I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to say, I'm going to try messing with the colors a little bit. Okay, so here's my algorithm to just get a whole bunch of random colors. Let's see if this works. Wow, yeah, okay, Jesus Christ, that's not good to look at. But it does, you can technically see, you can change the colors, it, oh my god. Okay, I can't have that on the screen, somebody is going to die. So that's all good, we have, we have shapes, this is no longer flickering like crazy. And, can we do anything else than shapes? Because I'm going to be honest with you guys, I never really liked labels, I never really liked rich text labels, I want a way to draw text which is low level than all of these convenient nodes which sort of do stuff for me, and you can do that, because in addition to drawing all these shapes, you can draw strings, um, so I'm just going to create a new font, and you have to do it this way because if you just load a font it will not work, so font, font data, now, where is my font? Because it's somewhere in here. I think it's that's where it is. Just gonna stick that in there. Yikes. Okay. And I think that's all I need to do. I'm just gonna say font. My position, of course. Let me just get another another one of these. Uh, string. Let's call it. Okay. There we go, there's string dot position. And what text shall we have? Let's give it a classic hello world. Okay. And we can see that is a very bad looking, strangely distorted version of my font. Now why is that happening? 
I just realized what the issue is, and I'm not going to go back and re-record the whole segment. I got to use preload. I think the fact that I'm loading it every single draw call is an issue, which makes sense because, I mean, that's got to be bad for performance. Is it really any surprise that it physically destroys the font as well? Um, don't load things in draw. Don't load things in process. You should, quite frankly, I should have been doing this up here. I should have had my own singleton. Uh, I did it in a terrible corner cutting way, and I was punished for it. Um, but hey, that's the end of the video. I figured out how to draw the texture. Again, preload, because this is what happens if you put load, it's bad. Preload is the way to go if you have to put something like that in there. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos if you like this. Please do some custom drawing on your own. This is somewhat of a, I don't know, a mess I could call it because, I mean, this doesn't look like anything. But hopefully this will inspire you to make something that does look like something and has a reason to exist more than just demonstrating the code. Goodbye.